Hey, welcome to CEO. I'm your host, Erica Thomas. Today we're here with Marla Malcolm Beck. She's the face behind Blue Mercury. Marla, thank you for being here. Sure, no problem. So Blue Mercury, skincare, spa, um, everything that's luxury, I want to give you a chance to just kind of open up and tell us about the business that you own. Sure. It's a national chain of cosmetic stores and spas. Uh, we carry hard to find exclusive beauty products like makeup, skincare, bath and body products, candles, and we offer spa services at every location. Oh, it sounds like something I like already. In addition to owning the business, your resume kind of reads like a recipe for success. I mean, you're a graduate <laughs> of Harvard Business School. Um, as well as University of California in Berkeley. And so I want to open up to the first student question. It comes from Samantha, and she has a question about that. Okay. Hi, my name is Samantha from the University of Maryland. And I was wondering, with all the students nowadays getting bachelor's degrees, do you think it really made a difference in your career that you got an MBA and an MPA? And would you recommend that other students get these degrees as well, or another graduate kind of degree? Thank you. I think um, graduate degrees are a key point of differentiation. Also, the experience is amazing. I met so many different people at Harvard Business School, people that had started businesses, people that had marketing backgrounds, backgrounds completely different from mine. Right. And so you learn so much from people like that, especially the people that had started other businesses. It made me think, oh, I can do that too. So graduate school really just opens your mind and opens opportunities. Um, so I absolutely recommend graduate school because getting a BA, it's like she said, everybody gets a BA these days. Right, um, right. So it really differentiates your resume. And what did you actually get your, your graduate degree in? Well, I got a master's in business administration and a master's in public administration. Uh -huh. um, so I've used the MBA a little bit more so far um, okay. as opposed to the master in public administration. Well, I'm sure there's plenty of time to use the other one as well. Yes. And so um, reading your story, I found out that you started the luxury line because you were not, you didn't have access to the products that you wanted. I mean, yeah. you, you thought about it, your idea came through that through that way and a lot of people starting businesses want to find out you know what's the best idea to kind of run with you know as far as looking at market trends and so we have another question that comes from Naveed okay. and he's going to ask that for you. So. Hi my name is Naveed Dardashi. I'm a senior at the University of Maryland and I would like to know if you have an entrepreneurial mind and it's constantly buzzing with ideas how do you filter out the ordinary ones and sort of know which ones to stick with? Right, so how do you kind of stay on track and say, this is what I'm going to go with, this is where I see there's a niche and I need to attack it, and this is what I'm going to stick with. How do you? I, I think there are two things. One is really finding a need or something that's missing. So when I started Blue Mercury, it was because I hated shopping at department stores. I hated the experience, and I wanted a friendly neighborhood retail store where you could get great service and friendly advice and not feel like people were really... Um, um, looking at what you were wearing or caring about who you were. And so it's really about finding a need that's out there. And then the other thing is part of it is just starting. A lot of people have ideas. There's an idea every minute, but you got to start and then you can change your idea as you evolve. But a lot of people, you know, have so many ideas. It's just about starting and getting into the game and then you evolve and figure it out. And because you touched on that, um, your store was a little bit different because you actually started the online store first, yeah. correct? And then opened the storefronts. And so what did you do to get started? What was your first step? Okay. Um, so what happened was, um, this was during the internet heyday, where there were so many new internet businesses. It was the first time you could buy products online, mm -hmm. but there was no, no cosmetic sites. And so my idea was to start a cosmetic site. Um, so I had to go talk to all the manufacturers and convince them to put their brands on my site. Um, so that was really the beginning. And then what happened is the internet bubble of 2000 burst, we ran out of money, and so we had to figure out how to make money, and so then we started with the stores. And so now it comes full force. We have the internet business, which is growing amazingly, right. and the stores. Um, but you just sort of start, and then you find your way. Had I never started, I wouldn't have figured out that the way we really needed to do our business was through the stores first, and then come back ar around to build the online business. Wonderful. Well, I want to jump into the next student question, actually. Um, it comes from Ben, and it talks about being an entrepreneur, because you you started the first business, you started the business when you were 29 years old, which mm -hmm. is by all means very, very young. And so people are getting out of college now, and this is probably the best time to start your own business um, in a time when you really want to depend on yourself. And so Ben has a question related to that. Okay. 
Hi, my name is Ben, and I'm at the University of Maryland's Business School. My question is, what challenges did you face that you found that were unique being a younger entrepreneur? It's an interesting question. I think being a younger entrepreneur is actually a little bit easier because you have nothing to lose. I wasn't married, I had no kids, I just had my rent to pay. Um, so I actually think it's the easiest thing to do because you just you don't see any barriers. It's actually a little bit harder once you have a family and you're concerned about making sure you've got food on the table. Um, so I would actually say the, the, the most opportune time is when you're young and in your 20s. Um, in terms of a barrier, you know, sometimes people don't take you seriously when you're going to try to meet with a manufacturer to get their your products online or you know you know what I mean some of the older people older more established people don't take you seriously but you just have to push a little bit harder and you right. can get through those things right perfect we're gonna take a break really quick and we'll come back and talk some more about your career and some career advice stay tuned we're on CEO with Margot Malcolm Beck I'm your host Erica Thomas and we'll be right back <laughs> 